<clears throat> we rolling? Hey, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I want to welcome you back to a beacon of light. I am Brother Anthony, and uh, today is uh, Friday, September 11th, 2020. It is about uh, 3.25 p.m., and uh, today I want to jump into Malachi chapter 3, or excuse me, Malachi chapter 2. You know, if you're new to this channel, um, what we do here is, is we read through the Bible chapter by chapter, book by book, and uh, we, we, uh, we talk about the chapter, we discuss how uh, the chapter can be used in our time, um, how it was used in their time, and, and how we can apply it to our everyday lives. You know, uh, I am not a pastor, I am not a preacher, but one thing I, I am is a, I'm a man who loves the Word of God, and a man who uh, who listens to the things of the Lord, you know, and uh, and that's all you need, brothers and sisters. You just need a, a love and a zeal to, uh, to, to love God's Word and to, to, to know how real and how living the, the, the Word of God is, you know, and... and the word of God is life changing. The word of God will uh, will convict you and and it will it will teach you and it will edify you and build you up and and it'll it'll help you to to make the right decisions and and teach you how to put one foot in front of the other so that you don't have to go back to your old ways. You know, a lot of us, uh, a lot of the people that I come in contact with, were were struggling addicts or were ex addicts or or were people who have a uh, who have problems and don't know how to how to walk in life without without stumbling, you know, and the word of God teaches you not to stumble. It teaches you how not to stumble. You know, there's parents who are teaching their children how to do the right thing and there there are uh <clears throat> so many people that that need to to hear the word of God. And like Paul said in Romans chapter 1, I am not ashamed of the of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. And if you're not a believer, if you're not a, a member of the household of Christ, I hope that these words encourage you. I hope that these words will, will lead you to a better understanding. I, I hope that you know that people are out there praying for you and for the believers who are constantly stumbling, constantly falling into their old ways. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that you're going through the same sufferings that, that are, uh, are happening all over the world. You know, um, I used to think that my prayers didn't amount to much. But as I pray, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for me. I'm praying for Christianity as a whole that we continue to look to our Savior. You know, as we read in, in the book of Malachi, you know, for the past couple of months, we've been going back and forth, or we've been going through the, the minor prophets. And we've been making our way to the New Testament. You know, and, uh, and this journey has taught us that uh, there's a people out there who, who profess that they are Christian, who profess that they're lovers of God, but yet their actions show otherwise. But yet their worship shows otherwise. But yet their hearts have another hidden agenda inside of it. You know, we read in Malachi chapter 1 uh, on the last video. And uh, it talks about getting rid of worthless worship. You know, coming to the altar half-heartedly. Bringing what is defiled before the Lord. You know, God wants all of you. He doesn't want some of you. He doesn't want a piece of you. He doesn't want you only today. He wants you every day, all day, hold the whole you, 100% you, so that he can mold you and shape you and build you up into a soldier for his kingdom. So let's go ahead and jump into the word, brothers and sisters. Uh, I pray that, that, that the words that I speak are not words of... Uh, of to lead someone astray, but that their words that uh, that will edify and build you up. I pray that these words convict your heart, that they that they show you something that you've never seen before, that you are taught 
by not only by Anthony Trejo's words, but you are taught by the Holy Spirit. You know, and I just pray that uh, that God will continue to to reveal these things to us. Uh, so what we do here, I know there's a lot of different translations out. You know, I handed some uh, New Living translations to a couple to a, uh, a couple people at work, and and I've handed other translations out to people who requested a Bible. But on this channel, we read from the New King James Version. I have a, uh, a study Bible that uh, I was real uh, familiar with when I was locked up. And uh, this New King James Nelson study Bible, you know, it, it comes in handy. So I read from the New King James, and then I follow it up with the Message Bible for a deeper and better understanding. If you guys don't have a Message Bible... Um, this is a good reference point to get so that uh, you can understand the words that sometimes the Bible's hard to understand. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. And let's see where God's going to take us. So a little recap from chapter one. Um, God is, is, is clearly upset. He's talking about how if he's a, the father... If he's a master, where's his respect? Where's his honor? You know, uh, he says, uh, "Why do you keep bringing defiled stuff to my to my altar? Why do you keep bringing things that uh, have no importance or things that are ugly and defiled, and you want to give them up to to uh, worship?" You know, and uh, we tied that in with uh, how people today. You know, uh, even within the church, especially within the church, how we come to the altar, we come to worship, but we only give him what we want to give him. You know, uh, I find it, I found it real hard for me to give up listening to to worldly music. You know, I listen to, I listen to Christian hip hop and I listen to, to worship and praise music. And whenever you see me with my headphones in, Check me. Hey, can I see your headphones so I can see what you're listening to? And I'll give it to you, and you'll see that I'm listening to Christian music. You know, and uh, and it's taken a long time to overcome that, that fleshly need. It's taken a long time to overcome those uh, those things that this flesh wants, you know, and, and to walk in the spirit, you know. and uh, But I have to tell you that even though... It may seem hard for you to give it all to God today. There's going to be a point in your life. Where you're going to be like, look, Lord, I'm tired of living one foot in, one foot out, trying to fake the funk. I'm tired of, of, of trying to live this way, trying to outbeat you. When uh, your word clearly says that there's no escaping your presence, that you know everything, even the dark things that are, that are hidden in my home, things that I do by myself, things that, uh, that that I thought I was hiding from everybody, but you know everything, Lord. Lord, cleanse me and teach me to walk worthy of you, to bring a worthy sacrifice, a sacrifice of my life to your to your altar daily, and God will continue to cleanse you. So chapter two goes into corrupt leaders. And here it is corrupt priests. Let's go ahead and jump into it, brothers and sisters. Malachi chapter 2, verse 1. And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will, I will rebuke your descendants and spread refuse on your faces, the refuse of your solemn feasts, and one will take you away with it. Then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. 
My covenant was with him, one of life and peace. And I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and turned many away from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should keep knowledge and people should seek the law from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But you have departed from the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, I also have made you contemptible and base before all the people, because you have not kept my ways, but have shown partiality in the law. Have we not all one father? Has not one God created us? While, why do we deal treacherously with one another by profaning the covenant of the fathers? Judah has dealt treacherously, and an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the Lord's holy institution, which he loves. He has married the daughter of a foreign god. May the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob the man who does this, being awake and aware, yet who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts. And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying, so he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive it with good will from your hands. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously, yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce. For it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that you do not deal treacherously. You have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet you say, in what way have we wearied him? In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. And he delights in them. Or where is the God of justice? So as you can see. The first part is self-explanatory. The second part needs a little bit more explanation. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, read it from the Message Bible. Let's see where... Uh, see what the Lord has for us. All right, Message Bible, chapter 2, verse 1. And now this indictment, you priests. If you refuse to obediently listen, and if you refuse to honor me, God of the angel armies, in worship, then I'll put you under a curse. I'll exchange all your blessings for curses. In fact, the curses are already at work because you're not serious about honoring me. Yes, and the curse will extend to your children. I'm going to plaster your faces with rotting garbage, garbage thrown out from your feasts. That's what you have to look for. Maybe that will wake you up. Maybe then you'll realize that I'm indicting you in order to put new life into my covenant with the priests of Levi, the covenant of God of the angel armies. My covenant with Levi was to give life and peace. I kept my covenant with him, and he honored me. He stood in reverent awe before me. He taught the truth and did not lie. 
He walked with me in peace and uprightness. He kept many out of the ditch. He kept them on the road. It's the job of the priests to teach the truth. People are supposed to look to them for guidance. The priest is the messenger of God of the angel armies. But you priests have abandoned the way of priests. Your teaching has messed up many lives. You have corrupted the covenant of priest Levi. God of the angel army says so. And so I am showing you up for who you are. Everyone will be disgusted with you and avoid you because you don't live the way I told you to live. And you don't teach my revelation truly and impartially. Don't we all come from one father? Aren't we all created by the same God? So why can't we get along? Why do we desecrate the covenant of our ancestors that binds us together? Judah has cheated on God. A sickening violation of trust in Israel and Jerusalem. Judah has desecrated the holiness of God by falling in love and running off with foreign women. Women who worship alien gods. God's curse on those who do this. Drive them out of the house and home. They're no longer fit to be part of the community, no matter how many offerings they bring to God of the angel armies. And here is the second offense. You fill the place of worship with your whining and sniveling because you don't get what you want from God. Do you know why? Simple. Because, because God was there as a witness when you spoke your marriage vows to your young bride, and now you've broken those vows broken the faith bond with your vowed companion, your covenant wife. God, not you, made marriage. His spirit inhabits even the smallest details of marriage. And what does he want from marriage? Children of God. That's what. So guard the spirit of marriage within you. Don't cheat on your spouse. I hate divorce, says the God of Israel. God of the angel army says, I hate the violent dismembering of the one flesh of marriage. So watch yourselves. Don't let your guard down. Don't cheat. You make God tired with all of your talk. How do we tire him out, you ask? By saying, God loves sinners and sin alike. God loves all. And also by saying, judgment? God's too nice to judge. Man. That message Bible really speaks out. This is a lot of uh, misconception about uh, the characteristics of God. Yes, don't get me wrong. God is a loving God. What love has anybody shown but by sending your only son to die for you? Jesus showed unending love by coming down from heaven in the form of a man and giving his life for you and I. When we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, in the Bible, it's described as a marriage as a unity of, 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 as a marriage between a man and a woman, so is uh, our relationship with Christ. It is intertwined. It says God hates divorce. God hates it when people split up. God hates it when one person cheats and the other one remains faithful. This goes deeper than just looking at marriage. This goes deeper than just looking at a man and a woman. This goes deep by looking at your relationship with God. It says here, His Spirit inhabits even the smallest details of marriage. Even the smallest details of marriage. If you're claiming, if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, You love him, but you're still going to the strip club. 
You trust him. You trust him. But yeah, you're putting faith in your homies. You said he's all powerful. Yeah, you can't escape the addiction. There's so many things that uh, Christ is. He's so pure. Yeah, you're filling your mind with all this smut. You're cheating on your marriage. You're cheating on your vows to fully trust in the Lord. Father, I can't do this walk alone. I need you. I'm tired of sin. And please forgive me for my sin. Let's become one. Now that we're one, now that he's forgiven me, I'm going to go ahead and go do what I got to do. That's not the way things are supposed to be. God hates it. It says, you make God tired with all of your talk. I hate the violent dismembering of the one flesh of marriage. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 12, it says, uh, <clears throat> two are better than one. Two are better than one. Because if it's cold outside, the two can keep each other warm. If one falls into the pit, his companion will be there to help him out. And a three-quart strand isn't easily broken. When you come together with Christ in the middle, when you come together with your husband, with your wife, with your spouse, and you have Christ in the middle, that bond is something that is hard to destroy. We must honor the bond that we have. You know, um, we must honor the things of God. There's so many leaders out there who are like these priests who honor God with their lips, but yet their heart is far from honoring the Lord. It says here, it's the job of priests to teach the truth. People are supposed to look to them for guidance. I'm seeking guidance from a leader who's only out for gain. What is that going to teach me? It's going to teach me that the church is greedy. It's going to teach me that the things of God are only about money. You know, when I should be teaching wholesome things, that God is loving, that God is pure. But if we don't turn to God and, and ask for forgiveness, he's going to come down with his wrath. That he's going he's gonna to curse even our blessings. If I wasn't to tell you that God is a vengeful God, if I was just to leave that equation out of the picture, how is that showing you love? How is that teaching you that, hey, this is a happy-go-lucky life? God loves you no matter what. He's not going to judge you. Do whatever you want as long as you profess his name. No. God wants you to learn how to trust him more. God wants you to learn how to overcome that sin. God wants you to see that your old ways of doing things are bad. He wants you to know that there is a way out. That there is a way out. That you don't have to listen to false teachers and false lies when Christ says it here. He says in uh, John 16, 33. Sorry, there's somebody outside. I'm trying to listen. In John 16, 33. Go ahead and jump to it real quick. If you give me a second. This is one thing that uh, you guys can have joy in is I don't edit my videos. You know, whatever you guys get is what you guys get. You know, there's a sneeze. 
if there's a, a noise in the background or somebody walks into the to the garage, you guys are going to get what you get. Because I don't know how to edit my videos. I don't know how to how to push pause and, and push play again. I try, but then the, I lose the video. So Jesus Christ said this. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, and has now come that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Why is Christ saying this? He's saying that you're going to come across false leaders. You're going to come across people who's going to teach you the wrong thing. But if you remain faithful to the words that I sent you, if you remain faithful to the conviction of the spirit within you, Then and only then will you be led out of that bondage of being taught the wrong thing. You know, uh, if somebody's teaching you something that, that doesn't line up with God's word, dig deeper. Pray on it. Ask somebody of faith. Hey, is this right? Hey, does this line up with uh, with 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 truth, am I supposed to believe in this? Do I take this man's word as something that, that I need to take to heart? Even my words, if you're hearing something from me that doesn't line up from what you are learning, ask somebody, hey, will you listen to this video? I want you to, I want to know if this brother right here is speaking the truth. I want to know if he is a leader who, who seeks after the things of Christ. Or is he only seeking for selfish gain? Is he only seeking for people to look at him in a different way? You know, I think you guys can tell by the number of subscribers that I have on my channel. I'm not out for the fame. If I can reach a certain number, if I can reach one person and help that one person change their life, then my job is done. If I can help that one person see the things of God in a better perspective, then I'm doing something great. I think that was Rena trying to come out. She's about to leave. But uh, there you guys have it. That is Malachi chapter 2. Tomorrow we will jump into Malachi chapter 3 and chapter 4, and we will finish this book and continue our journey into the New Testament. You know, I'm very excited about the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew is coming next, and, and God has something great lined up for our lives. You know, continue to read your word. Don't just take my word for it. Jump into God's word yourself and find that good, wholesome truth that will set you that not only will set you free, but it will point you to the one who's going to set you free. It's going to point you to the one who's going to set your feet on a solid foundation. It's going to point you to the one who's going to save you from your sin. It's going to point you to Jesus because Jesus' way is the only way that truly leads to life. There you guys have it. God bless you. Hope you guys have a good day. And uh, go ahead and see you guys tomorrow. God bless.